2017. BC now has the highest minimum wage of all provinces in Canada. This is important for workers in our province, especially for the lowest paid, most vulnerable workers, many of whom have worked tirelessly during the pandemic and kept our grocery stores open and our supply chain moving. Having a fair minimum wage is a key step in our effort to lift people out of poverty, to make life more affordable, and to continue BC's strong economic recovery. Our commitment from beginning was to increase the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour through measured increases and then link future increases to the rate of inflation so wages keep pace in a predictable and uh, certainty provided to the businesses. And that's exactly what we are doing today. Today I'm announcing that effective June 1st, 2022, the general minimum wage will increase by 45 cents per hour to $15.65 an hour. The 45 cent increase is based on British Columbia's average annual inflation rate in 2021. At 2.8% for the year, BC's inflation in 2021 was the highest since 1993. Using the provincial rather than national rate of inflation better reflect the reality for our workers where they spend and work. Along with changes to the general minimum wage, there will also be a 2.8% increase to the alternate minimum wages. Specifically, the minimum daily or monthly rates for live-in camp leaders, live-in home support, and resident care taker workers, as well the minimum agriculture peace rates for workers who hand harvest certain crops will increase by 2.8% on January 1st, 2023. The date for increase in peace rates was selected so it doesn't interfere with the harvest season. In closing, we will continue to advocate for fair wages for all workers, and especially those workers who have been so essential to our health and well-being during the pandemic. Thank you very much. And I now would like to invite Philip Aguari, the owner of the Old Surrey Restaurant, to the podium to say a few words about a minimum wage from small business perspective. Hi everyone, thank you Harry. Um, my name is Philip Aguirre, I'm the owner of the Old Surrey Restaurant. I'm also the executive director of the Newton Business Improvement Association. The Old Surrey Restaurant has been in business for the last 48 years and it's had two generations uh, working here in, in Surrey. And we've only done that through the people that are here in the, ci in, in the city and the community. And that includes our employees. And we've survived those five decades with their support. We couldn't have done it without them. As a small business, I see the positive impacts of a, of a, a decent minimum wage, and I'm here today to support the reasonable and predictable increases. Providing decent minimum wages for my employees ensures that they're happier, more productive, and they stay longer at the business. With the support of the community and our staff, we look forward to a prosperous future at the Old Surrey Restaurant. Thank you so much. Thank you, Philip. And finally, to give workers' viewpoint, I would like Agnes Estimo to come up and say a few words. Agnes? Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I take the Good afternoon, everyone. I am Agnes Estimo, and I am working as janitor at Metropolis at Metrotown for the almost 14 years. And I live with my husband and my two sons in Burnaby. Over the last few years, increases in the minimum wage have provided 
stability for my family and the family of my co-workers. It has helped with costs like rent, BC Hydro, and credit card bills, especially after the previous years of no increases in minimum wage at all. Being a janitor during the pandemic has been really important. We are essential workers sanitizing surfaces and others to avoid the spread of the virus and dealing with the public at all times. We are at risk, but we do our jobs to the best we can. I am very proud of the work that we do. The cost of living has gone up very fast. The pay has not kept up. We appreciate the increases over the last few years, but more needed to be done to keep heads up above the water. So this announcement is welcome news. It's good for everyone. When the minimum wage goes up, we spend that money on things like groceries. It raises the floor for everybody. Regular increases are important to keep families like just mine from falling behind. As prices and the cost of bills continue to increase, it's good to know our wages will increase as well. Right now, most of my co-workers have two jobs, three jobs, just to cope up with the <coughs> to afford the, the life here in BC. We are very excited about this news, knowing that the minimum wage is not frozen and continue to rise with inflation in great news for everyone. Thank you. Um. Thank you very much, uh, Agnes. You have heard from the business owner, you have heard from the worker side, how minimum, raising minimum wage in a gradual, predictable way is good for workers good for small businesses and good for our economy. I'm uh, ready to take any questions. Good afternoon, welcome to today's event. Reminder to the reporters on the line, please press star one to enter the queue. You'll be limited to one question and one follow-up. Our first question is from Lisa Yusta, City News. Lisa, go, to go ahead. Hi there, Minister. Uh, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but you know, this 2.8% increase is substantially less than the 5% inflation right now. So even with this increase, there are so many people, so many families in D.C. left unable to make ends meet. Gas prices are going up. What else can you do to help families now? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you for the question. It's very relevant. As we all know that month-to-month uh, -month inflation rate in Canada varies and it's very unpredictable, relative, relatively volatile. That's why we believed that's why we believe that going with average annual inflation rate in British Columbia, which in 2021 was 2.8 percent, makes sense at this time. But uh, again, uh, we fully understand the businesses are still hurting coming out of pandemic and the workers also living in one of the highest uh, uh, regime, uh, highest area of, of uh, living uh, cost uh, also still uh, struggling. So I think uh, this is what we are following the recommendations from the Fair Wages Commission, whose recommendation was to, uh, to, to provide a certainty to the businesses and gradual predictable wage increase for the for the workers. I think that's what we are following today. Lisa, do you have a follow up? I do. And so looking at, you know, so is it a year from now that people will see the rate of inflation right now reflected in what the increase is? Is a plan 
to do this annually. And, you know, when rents are going up like eight, you know, people are seeing like, um, I guess rent goes up 4%, but in other parts of the province it goes up higher. And, and people are seeing that they're just priced out of so many different areas. Are they going to have to wait another year to see another increase? Well, I think, you know, we need to, uh, to be balanced uh, with our approach. As I said, that the small businesses and the other businesses are still hurting coming out of pandemic. And at the same time, workers need a gradual, predictable increase so that they can keep up with the inflation and cost of living. And I think that's why this balanced approach of going annual, in, annual uh, uh, average for the past year is the right thing to do at this time. Our next question is from CJ, CJ Siju. Mr. Baines, uh, just uh, leading to the last comments you made, that the small businesses are hurting, as you said, uh, during uh, COVID period. And uh, at the same time, we're facing a shortage of workers. So how this increasing the wages can help communities? Yes, yeah, good question. I think when you uh, are looking at the worker shortage, I think one of the things we do is to make sure that the working conditions are the best and, and, and most desirable in British Columbia compared to other jurisdictions. We have, we have taken great steps in, in order to promote health and safety of the workers and also improving other areas uh, for the workers. At the same time, raising minimum wage will attract more workers. We have seen more workers moving to British Columbia in last year compared to the 30 years previously. So I think we are, we, are, we are dealing with this issue from all different angles. It will attract more workers to British Columbia and also keep the workers with the rate of inflation and gradual increase provide certainty to the businesses because that's what the Fair Wages Commission heard from the businesses, especially small businesses. What they need was certainty so that they know what their cost will be going forward so that they can plan for those increased costs. So I think this approach, uh, you know, deal with those issues. Mr. Baines, uh, what is your government is doing to shortage of workers, attracting foreign workers, students, they are stranded because of COVID. Are you making any special efforts to make sure that it's easier for foreign workers to come to British Columbia? Absolutely. I think the other part was that we brought in Temporary Foreign Worker Protection Act a couple of years ago to provide protection so that our temporary foreign workers are not abused or exploited. So I think we have taken that step. That's why Mexico last year was happy to send workers to British Columbia compared to other jurisdictions in Canada. So I think all those things are there to attract workers to BC. Also, the Minister of Jobs is also working with the Minister of Immigration, federally, federal counterparts, to make sure we streamline the immigration system for the temporary foreign workers so that they can uh, get to the job that are available to them. And also, we are moving ahead with the recognition of, of foreign credentials, because there are people with skills but they are not able to utilize those skills because their credentials are not recognized. So we are taking steps from all different angles to make sure the businesses get the workers that they need and the workers can utilize best of their potential in British Columbia. Provincial nominee program so more people can come to British Columbia? Yeah, that's what I commented on to make sure that working with the federal counterpart to streamline that process so that the workers, if we have recognized shortage of workers in certain sector, that there is an easy pathway for them to come and work. And, and the second part is give them pathway for permanent residency here. I think that's what uh, we are trying to work with the federal government because it's a, it's a shared jurisdiction and we're working hard on that. Our next question is from Rob Buffham, CTV. Oh, hi, Minister. Thanks for taking my question. My question relates to the impact of this on small businesses, as we've talked about, you know, many of them have had a very hard time during COVID, including with the labor shortage, but an additional cost, albeit relatively modest, is going to be hard on some of these businesses. What do you say to those businesses that are going to hear today's news and, and feel like it makes um, it even harder for them? Yeah, we certainly are aware that the businesses are struggling 
during pandemic. And that's why British Columbia government provided the, the most support to the businesses on per capita basis than any other jurisdiction in Canada. But at the same time, when a Fair Wages Commission went around the province to talk with small businesses and workers and their representatives, one thing became very clear. What businesses want was certainty. And having a gradual, predictable increases provide them with the certainty so that they can plan for their budgets going forward. I think that is the key here. Gradual, predictable increases is what the businesses want. And at the same time, the, uh, the economists have, uh, have also determined, many economists have determined, that uh, there's no link of job losses with the, uh, with the minimum wage. And uh, in fact, if you look at the last four years in British Columbia, now we are the highest minimum wage in the country, in, in, in all of the provinces in the country, but our economy is one of the best in the country. Our unemployment rate is the low, one of the lowest in the country. So clearly it shows the economy is still pretty hot. We have 84,000 more workers working today than pre-COVID. So I think the, the, this plan is working and uh, we are providing the certainty that the businesses need. At the same time, provide wage increases to the workers so that they can keep up with the, with the rate of inflation. The follow up. Um, and, and it's related to that. Thank you. A lot of the, um, the support for businesses now that we're transitioning out of COVID, though, will be gone. And I've spoken to, for example, a restaurant that said they're paying a living wage and they were able to do that uh, in Victoria here because of subsidies. But those are gone, so it's going to be even harder. I, I don't know if you have a maybe a response to that, please. Just the fact that I know there's been all this support for businesses relative to other provinces, but that support is is going as we get out of COVID. But uh, the cost of running a business is only now going up. I said the, the economy is one of the best in the country right now. What the business's biggest challenge right now is shortage of workers. I think when we provide support to the workers, make it more attractive for workers to move here to British Columbia, and we've seen more people are moving to British Columbia in last year than in the, the previous uh, 30 years, clearly shows that there are policies to attract more people to British Columbia to fill the gaps in the labor shortage is working, but we have ways to go still. Our next question is from Richard Zussman, Global News. Uh, Minister, uh, Rob made mention of it here, the living wage is still a factor. Over $20.50 in Metro Vancouver, we're still a long ways away from that with our minimum wage. So why not consider uh, increasing it even greater than minimum wage to get closer to living wage? Yeah, I think uh, it's um, we, when the Fair Wages Commission gave their initial report, they mentioned a couple of things. One was that once we reach minimum wage to $15, then we should link it to rate of inflation, which we are doing, and we are announcing that today going forward. But also, they said... Also, the part of uh, uh, the other part of the report that I'm still waiting from the Fair Wages Commission is to give us uh, suggestions and recommendations. What can we do to deal with the difference between minimum wage and living wage? It is a bit complicated, Richard, as you know, because the living wage in, in, in lower mainland is much different and higher than in smaller rural areas. So they are looking at that, and I'm waiting for the report to come, and I hope to see that report in my hands in coming uh, days or weeks. Richard, do you have a follow-up? Could there be supports for businesses to help encourage them to get closer to a living wage or even uh, additional support from government to offset what we expect will be a more significant increase next year due to current inflation rates? Well, said that I will wait for the recommendation from the Fair Wages Commission. You know, on the makeup of that, uh, that uh, uh, Fair Wages Commission is that there is an economist from the Business Council of BC, uh, there is a workers rep, and there is a, a professor as chair. I think uh, there is quite a bit of expertise that they have, and they are also uh, talking to different people out there. 
and then they will be coming back with the recommendations and we'll, we'll, we'll look at those recommendations and make that decision after I have their report in my hand. Our next question is from Rob Shaw, Chuck News. Hi, Minister. I'm just wondering if you're considering at all making this link to inflation a, a legislation, a, a law, rather than a policy decision that sort of, you know, determined every year going forward? Are you considering enshrining it in legislation? Yeah, thanks, uh, Rob. Uh, yeah, those are the two options we have. This year we're going with the order and council, and uh, we uh, want to give as much notice to the businesses as possible, and so we're going with the YC route. But we do have option to go uh, the legislative route, and I, we haven't made that decision yet, but in coming weeks, we will be making that decision, either go year by year through OIC or put it in legislation and make it permanent. Rob, do you have a follow-up? No, I'm good. Thank you. Our next question is from Shannon Waters, BC Today. Hi there, Minister. Um, you kind of responded to the question I was planning to ask, um, talking to Richard. Uh, the last time I spoke to you about the plans for the Fair Wages Commission's upcoming report on, you know, getting minimum wage closer to a living wage, you said you were expecting to have it around December or January. So is there a reason it's still being worked on? And do you have a more firm timeline for when those recommendations might be released beyond days or weeks? Yeah, thanks, Shannon. That's a good question. I've been waiting uh, for that report for the last couple of months, and I was hoping to have that by the end of last year. But uh, these are busy people. I think the COVID also uh, may have something to do with it. Uh, but I'm hoping to have that report soon. And uh, we've been in touch with, uh, with the members, and uh, we're pushing to get that report as soon as we can get that. Shannon, do you have a follow-up? I do on a slightly different topic. Um, last week it was announced that uh, your government is going to start consulting on pay transparency legislation with a focus on uh, the gender pay gap. This is a campaign promise from 2020. I'm wondering if your ministry is going to be involved in that consultation, potentially in the drafting of that legislation, and whether you would like it to consider potentially factors beyond just gender, understanding that there are are other groups in this province that experience pay discrepancies, which at this point in time, we don't really have a good handle on because there's no data. Yeah, no, to, to go with your last question first, I think uh, we want to be as inclusive as possible. And we are certainly are committed to have a pay, pay transparency in British Columbia. That's what the consultation has started. And uh, my ministry is involved with PS Lore. Uh, and she has done a lot of work, and uh, I think we will be informed by the consultation and the feedback we receive from communities and the, uh, the uh, advocates uh, uh, out in the community, the businesses, and we will be making that decision. But I can tell you, women should be paid same as men, period, full stop. But we are going to make the final decision and what kind of legislation there is going to be uh, after the consultation is completed. Our next question is from Glenn Korstrom, Biz in Vancouver. Hi, Minister. Um, I'm just wondering, I, in 2017, the NDP said they'd give business at least six months' notice of labor cost increases. And then in 2018, you set the June 1st date um, until 2021 when the wage would be over $15 an hour. But now you're, you're just giving two and a half months notice. <clears throat> um, but why is that? Why not uh, give business the six months notice that you promised? We were very clear uh, that after we reach minimum wage to $15 an hour minimum, uh, that uh, the rate will be uh, tied to the rate of inflation. That was the recommendation from uh, the uh, Fair Wages Commission report, and that's what we are following. Uh, yes, I would like to give as much uh, uh, a longer notice as possible to the businesses, uh, but you know we need to have some time to determine uh, what was the rate uh, of inflation 
on average for the last year. And those rates don't come published until after the end of the last year. So I think that's why it took a little time, but we want to give them as much time as possible. That's why the announcement is here today. Thank you. That concludes today's event.